reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. I, Daniel, found my spirit anguished within its covering of flesh, and I was terrified by the visions of my mind. I approached one of those present and asked him what all this meant in truth. In answer, he made known to me the meanings of these things. These four great beasts stand for four kingdoms, which shall arise on the earth. But the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingship, to possess it forever and ever. But I wish to make certain about the fourth beast, so very terrible and different from the others, devouring and crushing with its iron teeth and bronze claws, and trampling with its feet what was left, about the ten horns on its head, and the other one that sprang up, before which three horns fell, about the horn with the eyes and the mouth that spoke arrogantly, which appeared greater than its fellows. For as I watched, that horn made war against the holy ones, and was victorious until the Ancient One arrived. Judgment was pronounced in favor of the Holy Ones of the Most High. And the time came when the Holy Ones possessed the kingdom. He answered me thus, The fourth beast shall be a king fourth kingdom on earth, different from all the others. It shall devour the whole earth, beat it down, and crush it. The ten horns shall be ten kings, rising out of that kingdom. Another shall rise up after them, different from those before him, who shall lay low three kings. He shall speak against the Most High, and oppress the holy ones of the Most High, thinking to change the feast days in the law. They shall be handed over to him for a year, two years, and half a year. But when the court is convened and his power is taken away by final and absolute destruction, then the kingship and dominion and majesty of all the kingdoms under the heavens shall be given to the holy people of the Most High, whose kingdom shall be everlasting. All dominions shall serve and obey him. Verbum Domini. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Give glory and eternal praise to him. You sons of men, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. O Israel, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Priest of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Servants of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Spirits and souls of the just, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Holy men of humble heart, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, but of justice, peace, and the joy that is given by the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominus vobiscum. Te 
Jesus said to his disciples, Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, and that they catch you by surprise like a trap for that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. Verbum Domini Today is literally the last day in the liturgical calendar of the ordinary time, and tomorrow we begin the season of Advent in preparation for uh, Christmas. On this uh, last day, our Lord and the Church uh, remind us to be watchful. We are to be watchful and to be vigilant. The Alleluia verse and also the gospel uh, mention about this. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you may have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. And so part of being watchful and being uh, vigilant is having a consistent uh, prayer life. Uh, we don't want to just pray when things aren't so good. Uh, we want to pray and give thanks to God and praise Him when things are good as well. I don't wish any, any uh, terrorist acts or to anyone or to any country, but one sure good thing about those evil acts is that everyone is brought to one's knees. We know the recent uh, tragic event of uh, France, that literally after we found out about it, basically the whole world was praying for France. You know, and that's a good thing to pray for France, to pray for uh, the victims and to pray for protection and to pray for those who uh, mourn for their loved ones and to pray for uh, the conversion of these uh, terrorists, uh, these ISIS, all the various forms of uh, terrorist groups, you know, it's good to always pray for these. But when everything goes well, we tend to forget God. We tend to neglect our prayer life and thus not be vigilant and not be uh, watchful. You know, our Lord did not say to be vigilant during specific time only, like time of terrorist acts or times of a critical period of our life or times of dangers, but he said, be vigilant at all times. You know, this was articulated, articulated in, the, in the Alleluia verse and also in the gospel. So we're hearing it twice uh, for today's uh, readings. And none of us know uh, when we have to render an account of our whole life. You know, none of us know the day and the hour when we will die. And of course, when, you know, we're, we've been praying for Anne Marie, uh, the twin sister of Father Anthony, when we are diagnosed for something like that, cancer or some kind of terminal uh, illness, we have in a sense, sort of, when we're about to die, but we don't really know exactly when. Uh, again, none of us know when uh, the day, the hour when we will die. None of us know the exact moment when we will come before the judgment seat of God. So the Lord wants us to always be ready and to always uh, be vigilant. And besides having a regular, uh, consistent prayer life, striving to always do God's will is another important part 
of being vigilant. Uh, doing God's will in our married life, doing God's will in our priestly life or in our consecrated life, doing God's will in our single life or widowed life. You know, again, this is like so essential. Yesterday was the feast of uh, St. Francis Anthony Fasani in the Franciscan calendar, and one of the phrases that he used to say often was about the will of God. He said, the will of God, that is my paradise. You know, he always say that often, the will of God, that is my paradise. So striving to always do God's will in any uh, state of life that we're in is being vigilant uh, at all times. And today's saint is St. James of the March, or, or, or of the Mars, uh, the friars and I were discussing about this before Mass. Is it the March or is it the Mars with, with C or with S? Well, one thing I found out several years ago when I was trying to figure out what's going on here, uh, one ordo, uh, I think it was the Capuchin ordo, said the March with C and the conventional has an S. So uh, both are the same, the same person, St. James of the Mars or St. James of the March. Uh, but he, too, is a Franciscan, uh, just like uh, St. Francis Anthony Fasani, yesterday's saint. And for St. James, God's will for him was to spend the rest of his life in preaching. And he, had, he wrote a beautiful um, uh, letter in the, uh, that was taken to the Office of Reading this morning about this litany of the, the positive effects of preaching. You know, it's during the preaching when uh, we, you know, we make a decision to do God's will. It's during the preaching that we receive God's grace. You know, again, all these litany of the benefit of uh, preaching. This is, again, this is God's will for him to spend the rest of his life in preaching. And this is how God kept him to be vigilant. And this is how God helped the people through him uh, to be vigilant. Again, because it was through the preaching of the Word of God that people are challenged to be vigilant. And having a consistent prayer life and doing uh, the will of God are two elements that are essentials in being vigilant uh, at all times. And of course, on this uh, Saturday, I don't want it to skip Our Lady. You know, she is the perfect example of one who is always vigilant. Not always vig not vigilant just before the Annunciation or before any special moment of her life, but vigilant at all times. You know, Our Lady is like that. She's always praying to God on our behalf. She's always doing the will of God at all times. So from generation to generation, she's always vigilant at all times. She's always telling uh, you and me to do the will of God. At Cana, uh, she told the servers and she's telling us, do whatever he tells you to do. Do whatever Jesus tells you to do. Do whatever the will of God is for you. And of course, she herself does the will of God. You know, at the Annunciation, she said it, be it done unto me according to your word of God. You know? And at Calvary, she said the same thing, not out loud, but silently within her immaculate heart, your will be done, O Father, and always doing the will of God. And this, this uh, vigilant spirit that she has is from her son. It's from her son, because her son is always our mediator before God. He prays to the Father constantly on our behalf. He always, not only prays, but he always carry out the Father's will, even if that meant sacrificing his own life. And so let us uh, imitate our Lord and our Lady and all the saints that we all would respond uh, generously uh, to be vigilant, not only on this last day of ordinary time, but also and not only during Advent in preparation for Christmas, 
but that we be vigilant at all times, just as our Lord uh, calls us uh, to do.